Welcome to my latest case, Secret of the Scarlet Hand. Secret of the Scarlet Hand. Either junior or senior detective. If you're dear dad, greetings from the new deputy curator at Beecho Museum in Washington, D.C. I miss you, by the way. How's Africa? I sure hope this letter reaches you in Wagadougou before you move to Nairobi. So I got the internship. Your old friend Franklin Rose was awfully nice to submit my name to the rest of the members of the museum's board of directors. What an opportunity while I'm in between cases. As you probably know, the museum specializes in ancient Maya culture. Mm. My supervisor is going to be Joanna Riggs, a well-known archaeologist. Maybe you've seen her name in the news recently, in conjunction with the discovery of a strange Maya monolith. Apparently, it's created Ooh. quite a buzz among experts in the field. Well, Beach Hill plans to well. feature the monolith in an upcoming exhibition. Beach Hill? Just imagine this Detective Beach. Been for hundreds of years, and now it's going to be unveiled to the public for the first time. The museum is short-staffed at the moment, and they're expecting such a huge turnout that they've closed their doors to prepare. I can hardly wait to dig into this exciting project and learn how archaeologists and historians solve the mysteries of ancient cultures. I'll keep you posted. Love, Nancy. Nancy Drew, I presume. I'm Joanna Riggs. Welcome to Beach Hill. Beach. I was just checking the lock on this display case. This is one of the museum's most treasured pieces, a wow. carving of King Pakal. Pakal. Who is King Pakal? Pakal assumed the throne at age 12. Can you imagine? That Whoa. was 615 AD. He ruled for 68 years at the height of the Maya civilization. Holy is that shit. Jade? Yes, the Maya loved jade and used it for many of their carvings. Jade staircases. There isn't another piece like this in the world, and it's priceless, every Sunday, which means I practically had to sell my own grandmother to get it. How did the museum acquire it? Leave it to Taylor. You sold Saint your grandmother to get it. Wizard, when it comes to these deals, <laughs> you'll need him later. Taylor Sinclair. Okay. Now then, Nancy, you're coming on board at a critical time for Beach Hill. An exhibit of this caliber is not kid stuff. Franklin Rose assures me you're a real trooper, and I hope he's right because I'm not here to babysit. I don't care who your father is. Her frequency is like <laughs> I turned up the volume then I started the game and then her she started talking I was like, "Okay, volume down a little bit." <laughs> glad to be here. Tell me more about the exhibit. I'm glad to be here. Please, tell me more about the exhibit. In addition to our permanent collection, we're borrowing rare pieces from museums and private collectors around the world. Soon we'll be sitting on the most fabulous collection of Maya artifacts ever assembled in one place. And now that we've scored the monolith too, Beach Hill Sera Numero Uno. Sera Numero Uno. I say it in Japanese. Numero Uno. Um... Was the monolith excavated in Mexico? Yes, a hot young team of archaeologists, Americans and Mexicans both, dug it out of a cave near Palenque. Every curator from here to Siberia was trying to get a hold of it, but I'm the one who closed the deal. Okay. What does this monolith look like? It's a massive pillar of stone, nearly 1,500 years old, with Maya glyphs carved into it. We've installed it in the garden. Wait until you see it. Okay. 1,500 years old. Wow. <laughs> explain a glyph. Could you explain what a glyph is? A glyph, as in hieroglyphic, is a picture that represents a word or an idea. Henrik is the human encyclopedia on the subject. Is it just me or does Nancy's voice sound really soft compared to her voice? Or maybe I just don't like her frequency, but... How many glyphs are there in all? Henrik can help you with that. Henrik, is he on staff here at the museum? Henrik Vanderhoon, world-renowned expert in Maya Vanderhoonus? He's the latest addition to the Beach Hill Brain Trust. I told him I don't even want to see his pointy Vander head till he's got a translation <laughs> on that monolith. <laughs> Vander head. Pointy Vander head? Where was he working before? She's louder. At the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center She's in New yelling. Mexico. Anyway, there's a list of tasks for you in the lab. Once you've knocked those off, we'll regroup. Shouldn't I have more training? Don't worry, you'll be in the swing of things soon enough. Go ahead and take a look around the museum. I'm sure you'll find the monolith, Mui and Terrasante. <laughs> or just roll up your sleeves and hit the lab. <gasps> Mui and Terrasante. <laughs> 
Perfect pronunciation. Perfect. Thanks for the orientation, Joanna. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, we're free. Okay. Nice music. The Great Plaza of something, Guatemala. Ooh, what's that? Oh, can't look at it. Art in the Americas, Hidden Guatemala. Interview with Prudence Rutherford. R Rutherford? Yeah, that sounds better. Prudence. How did a New York Society woman like yourself end up in Topeka, Kansas? My husband, Herbert Laszlo, was a hydro engineer. When he got appointed to head up, to head up the Kansas River Flood Control Project, naturally we came to Topeka. When Herbert drowned, everyone thought I would make a beeline back to New York, but after 36 years in Topeka, I don't know how to read this name, I just didn't have the heart to leave. The truth is, this is my home now. I mean, yeah, 36 years is a long time. Just as an aside, I find it interesting that you never took his name. That was almost unheard of at the time of your marriage, wasn't it? Yes, well, I never was one to worry about conventions. And where I come from, once a Rutherford, always a Rutherford. Well, you certainly have been a trailblazer now, back... Oh, you certainly have been a trailblazer. Now, back to Topeka. What about your love for the arts? What in the world... What in the world do you do for culture and entertainment here? Oh, my stars, don't underestimate Topeka, dear. The arts are alive and well here. We have theater, symphony, and over 20 art galleries. I organize the St. Patrick's Day Parade, the Corn Growers Ball, and I sit on the board of the Topeka Commissions for the Arts, too. This is the capital of Kansas, after all. Miss Rutherford, art appraiser, is thrilled to be featuring your fire ruby necklace in this month's issue. Please tell us about this extraordinary piece of jewelry. The necklace originally belonged to Herbert's mother, Hester, rest her soul. We never got along. Oh, but those rubies really did blaze, like a burning ring of fire, around her neck. You had the necklace altered when you inherited it, is that right? Yes. Well, Hester's spirit was just a bit too overpowering in the necklace. I felt like I was going to be strangled whenever I wore it. So I decided to add a piece from my own family to balance out the energies and, you know, make it my own. It's kind of cool. I like that. Um, how do I exit? Topeka Commission for the Arts. How cultured. Oh, I could have zoomed in. I didn't need to. I could. I read it just fine. Anything else? I see a National Geographic there. <laughs> Let's see. Mm hmm. Nothing here for now. <laughs> Cute. We can look at everything. Ooh, boxes. Can't go behind the desk. Okay, let's leave. Finding the Maya. Traveler's Guide to Beach Hill Museum. Beach! Ooh, we have a map! The Wind God. Rotunda, Exhibition Hall, Temple, Garden. Hmm. Headphones. Beach. Hmm. I feel like there would be secrets here, but I can't find them yet. This is where we came from, right? So we can go to the exhibition hall. Oh, that's it. Oh, or these doors. What? Oh, we can travel around back and forth to the hotel. Good thing Franklin gave me the museum key. Okay, so that's the front door. Gotcha. Wow, that would be a fucking cool exhibition. Let's have a look, shall we? Who are the Maya? 
The term Maya refers to a group of Mesoamerican Indians from the region of southern Mexico and northern Central America, noteworthy for their cultural and scientific achievements from 1800 BCE to 1500 CE. Maya society was comprised of a complex system of nobility, priests, warriors, workers, and slaves. Ooh, there's so much to look at. Range of the Maya. Oh, can we do an audio tour, you think? Maya ruins like the one featured in this photo can be found throughout southern Mexico, Guatemala, and western Honduras. Even today, new cities are being discovered by archaeologists. I just opened it. Oh god. I'm stealing! I'm stealing quick! Get out of here! I'm stealing. It's locked. But oh, this one's locked. Ham radio. <laughs> Ham radio. <laughs> Do you think they have bacon radios too? Used by the Cortezar Alvarez Palenque, Palenque expedition of 1955. Doesn't tell me anything. It's locked. It's locked. The Maya were renowned for their functional and stylistic expertise in pottery, painting, architecture, and jewelry. Artisans worked with a variety of materials, including clay, jade, staircases, gold, limestone, and wood. A variety of tools and materials used by the Maya demonstrate a complex and thriving trade system. I got Stardew on the brain. Offering bowl. To the war god Balak. The logo graph for black is represented on the base. That? Oh, that's important. I can feel it. My Drew senses are tingling. Ek is black. Okay. Anything here? No? Okay, next one. One step forward, go to the right. Maya kings not only ruled their people's political and military affairs, but their religious practices as well. Kings were considered to be divinely appointed by the supreme god Itzamna. While the majority of kings were male, there were several notable exceptions, including Lady Kanali Kal, who ruled for over 20 years. Ooh, King Kinik Chanapakal, also known as Hanapakal, Pakal II, Pakal the Great, or Lord Shield Pakal. Pakal, whose name translates to shield, was born in 603 and ascended the throne in 615 at the age of 12. Considered both a priest king and a military ruler, Pakal claimed divine descent and ruled the great Maya city state of Palenque for 68 years until his death in 683. The 11th ruler of Palenque, I'm just saying Palenque, I have no idea if that's correct or not. I'm sorry if it is. Pakal was responsible for the majority of the city's construction. His ancestry and accomplishments are immortalized in Palenque's temples and palaces, especially the Temple of the Inscriptions, which was the primary sacred site in Palenque and later the shrine of Pakal's tomb. Pakal was buried wearing the jade death mask you see here, right. The mask was meant to distinguish Pakal as royalty, even in the afterlife. Much of what we know about King Pakal and the Maya civilization over which he presided has been pieced together by translating the glyphic inscriptions on his tomb. So this is his death mask? That's so cool. I feel like we're actually in a museum. <laughs> we're actually like going from aisle to aisle and like reading the descriptions and learning things. Pakal's ascension, carved panel. In his relief, Pakal's mother offers her son the divine crown for his ascension to the throne. Lady Zak Cook was a powerful figure in Maya history and established the Pakal din dynasty. Dynasty. Hmm. Look at that mask. It's cool. So this is the one she put away, right? No. Yeah, it is. She was checking the lock. 
This unusual jade relief features an intricate representation of Lord Bakal, one of the greatest rulers of Maya classical period. Both the origin and function of this highly stylized piece are unknown. Hmm. It's a stamp. Okay. Religion played an important role in Maya society. All scientific progress was impelled by the priests' need to understand and manage the sacred forces of the Maya universe. Different gods represented aspects of Maya life, from basket weaving to calendar days. Even today, little is known about the role or names of the gods represented in Maya artifacts. Oh yeah, wasn't it the Mayans who... who said the world would end in like 2012 because that's where their calendar stopped or something? And then people were like, well, they just didn't think that far ahead, so they just didn't make any more of the calendar. The deities depicted in this exhibit are the rain, moon, and sun gods. Cool. Three masks depict the corn god. Yum. <laughs> Yum cocks. <laughs> the jaguar god. I have no idea how to say that. And the sun god. Mm, creepy. Solkin calendar stones used to compute the 260 day ceremonial year. Oh, a year was 260 days for them? I wonder if I should keep trying the locks. It's locked. Most customs and rituals were based on religious practices and played an important part in Maya daily life. Some, such as the wearing of earrings, are considered by our culture as ordinary, while others, such as bloodletting and human sacrifice, are seen as barbaric. Many ancient Maya customs are practiced today by the indigenous people of northern Central America and southern Mexico. There's no lock on these, so some of them we can maybe open later. <laughs> this mask. <laughs> Replicas of body shaping devices. The Maya used these things to change their appearance. Wow. Well, nose ring, yeah, I get that. But Maya ball game artifacts. Huh. That's cool. The Maya writing system is the most advanced ever developed in the New World. As with Egyptian hieroglyphics, symbols represent either sound or concepts. Mayan is considered a distinct linguistic group, and several modern variants exist today, including Quiche, Apshep, and Ixil. I have no idea. I would struggle with this in Dutch, so forget about English. Scribes played an important role in Maya culture, and some were elevated to prominent social positions. The Mayan writing system used logographs to represent either sound or ideas. Is that like a hieroglyph? It's like a, a logograph, is that like an image then? More like a drawing. Uh, Maya scribes used a variety of writing tools, inks and inkwells. Note the logograph for ink inscribed on the plate. Okay, so this one has two there. Three lines down the center. This might not even be used, but don't know how to read it, but it's ink. But it says ink on the bottom of the bowl, but then if you put ink in, then you can't read that it's ink. <laughs> You're obscure, obscuring your own thing. Maya numerical notation used both the bar and dot system and pictorial representation. Oh, I've used this. I've done a puzzle with this. Oh, God. Is that Parasite Eve? The PS1 game? Parasite Eve 1 or 2? You go to like a... Like a jungle bit. It's like in a museum or something and they have these dots and lines. Yeah, I remember... I remember this system. Oh? Just one more tile. One more tile. 9 and 12. So we have to put them in order. Like, this is... 
Like the the line is a number and then the dots are like one each, I think. So this uh, and these little leaf things must mean something as well. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for this puzzle. Close it. Foomp. Did I look at this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We can go up and to the sides. There's a door there. Nothing there. Um, let's check the side here. Ooh. Wow. Nature. There's a tile on the ground there, I see that. This limestone panel depicts the presentation of three captives to the throne of Shield Jaguar. Okay. What a cool exhibition. This altar was dedicated during the reign of the 16th ruler of Kopan, Pasa. The focal point of this artifact is the large two-headed crocodile. Loud birds. This creature is called the... What? Bicephalic? I have no idea how to read that. And it represents the continuous cycle of life and death. What's that? Oh, a tile! <gasps> We need more info on the the numbers, though. What the numbers mean? There must be a book somewhere. Little is known about this relief. It depicts a nobleman standing on a captive. Note the elaborate headdress and cape containing references to Talak, the rain god. Sure, if you say so. Please stay on the path. I will. Here I go. The seated figures are a royal couple whose detail is unusual for this area. The function of the artifacts is unknown, but may have been part of the throne. Inscriptions reveal that the piece was dedicated to the goddess of the moon. Ech. Ech. One sec, as I draw this thing. Tazam. Throne. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. This is totally- I saw the grass and I was thinking about it. Totally random, but you know how there's a- Oh, look at us circling this thing. Well... I completely lost track of where I am. Maybe we should go this way? Like there? I don't- oh god. I think this is where I came from? Oh my god, this is so confusing. How do I exit this? Exhibition hall is where I came from. Okay. No, this is where I came from. Fuck. I want to go to these stairs here. Okay, I don't think this is where I've been. Yeah. This lintel shows Lady Chalk, Shield Jaguar's wife, celebrating her husband's ascension. She kneels with her hue pill tied around her knees. Traditional woven Maya blouse that holds both symbolic and ceremonial significance. Maya believed that hue pills had magical power. Cool. This looks- oh my god. This reminds me so much of uh, El Dorado. The road to El Dorado. This panel is one of the several commissioned by Bird Jaguar and details his capture of the Cajal, prominent local nobleman. Sure. Early Maya ruler Baktul is represented in this stela performing a vision quest ceremony. The vision serpent looms over the king, revealing the ancient spirit that's being contacted. Four miniature gods hang onto the body of the vision serpent. Okay. Whatever you say. 
The marriage between Shield Jaguar and Lady Shock is represented in this piece. She offers a shield and Jaguar helmet to her betrothed. So much info. Wait. Uh, that's the one I saw. Oh my god, this place is so confusing. Famous British explorer Archibald... Archibald? Archibald? Rutherford discovered this piece in 1884 within the temple. Text on the slab comm commemorates Pakel's ascension. Ah. Okay. Ooh. Oh, we're back out. We're free! <sighs> okay. It's very quiet here. Oh, there we go. What's up here? Beach Hill. Oh. Welcome to the Beach Hill Maya Mystery Temple. With the help of the museum guide, you will learn about the Maya culture and maybe even discover the hidden tomb of King Pakal. Use your temple key card to place the different games on each play the different games on each temple level. Once you finish every activity for a level, your temple key card will unlock the entrance to the next level. Good luck. Quiz. Pakal ruled over which city in present-day Mexico? Oh god. Did we even read about that? Palenque? Oh my god. <laughs> the name of Pakal's mother. I can't think of it. Oh. <laughs> it needs a card. It needs a card. Mom? Where you at? Oh, Pakal's mother. Lady Zack Cook. Okay, let's go back. What is the name of the calendar used to compute the 260 day ceremonial year? Oh god, okay, we did see that. Maybe here? Calendar. Zolkin? And Zolkin. Calendar stones. Okay. You need a keycard for the game or it won't progress. So should we wait until we get that? key card anyway. Is that better you think? You can get it? Okay. See what the next question is and then we'll wait until we get it. What's the name of the calendar? So... Sulkin? Can't type. Nice! The name of the supreme god in Maya mythology. Okay. So that's the next thing we gotta look up. Supreme God. Supreme God name. Okay. So where can we get a card? It needs a card. Okay. His music also reminds me of Road to El Dorado. <laughs> Such a fun movie. Miguel and Tulio. Mighty and powerful gods. I need What's this? to find a temple key card. Hmm. What's that? Doesn't say. Why did I think that hovering over it would give me information? <laughs> That's a hog thing to do. Okay, so let's check... The door? Oh, water. Ha! I don't even know if I'm gonna use these for anything, but... Okay. Got it. Can I check those? Can I check these? The lab. 
We're gonna do some Resident Evil shit. Instruction manual. Congratulations on your purchase of the state-of-the-art Dina Ham model. We at Kramercom know that you will enjoy your new communication device for years and years. Helpful information. If it isn't Kramercom. The wonderful world of ham radio. Oh, the radio in the museum, in the exhibition. Ooh, we're gonna... S Space Age digital keypad allows you to enter four digit frequency. You can either listen to the activity on the channel or use the ham morse code keyboard to transmit a message. Cool. To enter in a frequency or channel number, simply edit... edit Enter a four-digit number on the numerical keypad and press connect. Okay, that's easy. All messages are sent using Morse code. See appendix. One letter at a time. Ooh, we're gonna get some Morse code! Left button erases the series of dots and dashes that have been entered prior to hitting the send button. If you realize you have made a mistake after hitting send... Okay, ignore. Transmitted on uh, transmission error, so we play. Good maintenance techniques, blah blah blah. Oh, okay. Picture time. There. Save that for later. Oh, that's it. Okay, thank you. Canyon Culture Center, Sheila. Let's write that number down. Okay. Just in case we gotta make a phone call. It's locked. It's locked. Damn it. Can't be nosy over here. Oh, there's a phone right here. Is this a radio? Oh, yeah. But we don't know what frequency we want to listen in on. Buy milk. <laughs> okay, they'll have to wait. Oh! I need to find another piece. Oh. The one that we found is already in. Okay, good. Oh, who's this? You must be Nancy, the new oh. deputy curator. I'm Henrik Vanderhune. Vanderhune. Pleased to meet you. What are you working on? Just Hello, some thank house you. Keeping. Why are you wearing that mask? COVID, These obviously. These old artifacts are murder on my allergies. Uh, anyway, what can I do for you? Um... I'm not sure what to do with those shards of pottery Joanna left for me. Play around with those pieces until you've reconstructed the pot they once were. There may be a few extraneous pieces. Likewise, you may find yourself on a scavenger hunt for a piece or two, if I know Sunny June. Hmm. I'm curious about your work. How do you go about translating a glyph anyway? It can be a complicated process, involving research, piecing lots of different elements together, and a healthy dose of guesswork. So there isn't a definitive dictionary of Maya glyphs where you can look things up? Oh, I'm afraid not. You see, glyphs are so intricate and full of subtleties that multiple meanings may be embedded in a single glyph. So three distinct looking three. glyphs may all translate to mean sunshine, roughly, but with different nuances. There is so much we still don't know. Lucky for me, I guess, or I'd be out of a job. <laughs> Can I give that ham radio a try? Absolutely not. The radio is a tool, not a toy. One has to be extremely careful about the kind of information one sends out over the airwaves. And I do not have time to monitor you. And besides, the vacuum tubes have been terribly fussy lately. If another one fussy. blows, I think I'll go mental. Joanna turned me loose without too many instructions. Do you have any advice for me? Well, as you've probably heard, the museum is closed in preparation for the exhibit, so you'll have free run of the place. Please explore. The sooner you get to know your way around, the better. Think yeah, he's a great your voice actor. Base, your center of communications. Anyone who wants to get in touch with you will leave a note or a voicemail here, so check in often. 
I'm very busy with my work, so you're going to have to be pretty independent, but I suspect you wouldn't have it any other way. See you around, Henrik. I suspect you will. Damn. Um, okay, what else we got? What's this? Do not operate without permission. Oops. Well, I guess I don't have any business there yet anyway. So... Let's see... Is this gonna be important again? Oh my god. Takes me back to the first game. Shibalba? Did you see that? It said Shibalba. To Shibalba? To Shibalba! What's that? Hmm. Property of Sunny June. Uh, I can't read it. Notes. I hate that. Bull game. Random. Four pieces of corn different than dice. Try pa Pascal's triangle. Right. Aliens did it. <laughs> This is freak one and three frequency of four. I feel like this is important. B two. Hello, Perky. Audio narration thingy is gonna be so much work. Luckily, old Hurricane Sunny managed to um, bor borrow Joanna's notes for this project. Must distract Joanna only after her coffee break. Garden. Oh. This is the route we took. O C H K J. Temple as well. Or the main exhibition hall. I don't know what that's for. Must surf web! <laughs> sure wish the lab had a computer. Just have to check out the latest alien adventure games. If only someone would make a game about the Ma Maya? Hmm. Joanna found out about the stinky cheese incident. Big trouble now. <laughs> Coco Bandit. I heard Storm and Joanna coming over better hide this. Lots of things here that seem important. Just taking a picture just in case. Wow, that's a lot of bars. Coco Kringle. Now with 80% less fat. That's not cho chocolate anymore then though. Close that. Okay, bottom drawers don't have anything. Order ASAP. Bubble wrap. Silvio Jr. Irene. Super Archiver. We have a couple numbers here. Keep it real, restoration. The microscope doctor. Hmm. Oh, assistant curator tasks. So, me? Sort out shards of pottery and reassemble pot. Switch out plain knobs on display cases. Oh, switch out the knobs. Hmm. Bring addenda to monolith loan agreement. Order bubble wrap. Oh, so we can order that. Match recorded narrations to appropriate displays in the main exhibit. You need the headphones for this. Reorder Maya numbering exhibit in the main exhibition hall. Yeah, that's that puzzle. Okay, we can order bubble wrap. You have no voicemail. Press nine for an outside line. <laughs> two o oh, two five 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 nine nine. Oh. <laughs> you have no voicemails. Doyle Bonanza 
is open from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Please call back during regular business hours. Have I been... Oh, it's 7 p.m. Oops. Um... Well, that didn't work. Who's Franklin Rose? Boswell Jackson and Rose. May I speak to Franklin Rose, please? Who may I say is calling? This is Nancy Drew. Just a minute, please. Nancy, great to hear from you. How's the internship treating you? Are Joanna and Henrik showing you the ropes? So far, so good, I think. There's a lot of work to do before we launch this exhibit, but somehow we'll pull it off. Glad to hear you're settling in. I'm off to a meeting, but feel free friend. to call me if you have any questions. I'm sure everything's going to be smooth sailing, Mr. Rose. Bye, kiddo. Bye, kiddo. Okay. Um, let's leave it for now. We might have to... Yeah, she bulba. <laughs> we might have to just call when um we haven't been here yet call next call tomorrow during working hours convomatic auto narrator what i am lord pakal ruler of the mighty kingdom of palenque all those who come before me witness my power Lord Pakal is considered the most influential this is the ruler tour. of the Maya civilization. Cultural, scientific, and military achievement flourished under his reign. As with all Maya kings, very little is known about his personal life, since all written inscriptions dealt solely with public achievements such as wars, battles, coronations, births, marriages, and deaths. So that's entry seven. Seven is Pakal. Oh, four. Oh, that's one. One. Lady Zack Cook ruled Palenque before her son ascended the throne in 615 CE. Maya tradition required that the kingship be handed down from father to son, but Lady Zack Cook broke this custom by so establishing fun. herself <laughs> as a deity. <laughs> This gave her the power to justify the new royal lineage. Because his mother had been deified, Pakal often referred to himself as the first true king. The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. Gods. Chak was the god of rain. Ishel, goddess of the moon, presided over childbirth and basket weaving. A how kin represented the sun. Ceramic bowls, such as the one featured in this exhibit, may have been used as vessels for burnt offerings of incense or corn. This bowl was either dedicated to or used to supplicate the god of war, Balak. Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas of the world. Ham radio. Ham radios are often the only means of contacting the outside world. Ham is an acronym for handheld amateur radio. Oh, so it's not park. Gotcha. Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well known, it is difficult to determine the range of Maya influence. Some experts believe the Maya may have traveled as far south as the Amazon hmm. and as far north as North America. I'll just put down geographic range. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Here is an example of the numbers from 0 to 19, from top left to bottom right. Notice how some numbers are represented with bars and dots, and some are represented with pictures. That's why I want to know. So I can do the puzzle. Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but very little is known about daily life in the Maya world. Although there scribes. are thousands of inscriptions found on artifacts and architecture, there are only a handful of Maya books in existence today. Mm. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costumes, 
costumes. Their bodies to heighten their beauty. Oh, body shaping. Beads were dangled in front of infants' faces to encourage crossed eyes, a trait considered attractive to the Maya. <laughs> no. Like, wouldn't you be a bad hunter if you're deliberately cross-eyed? <laughs> Goofy-ass babies. <laughs> Boom kitty. <laughs> The Maya ball game was a religious activity as well as a spectator sport. Ball game. Players would propel a rubber ball through a small stone hoop using their thighs, hips. Why would you deliberately make yourself cross-eyed? Practice among the Maya. In this panel, three captives wear garments associated with bloodletting. A variety of instruments, including stingray spines, thorns, and bone awls, were. The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam, and the twins of sacrificial dance, Chak Shibsh Chak, and the baby jaguar. Baby jaguar. The Maya were baby particularly jag. fascinated with twins, and many of the Maya gods were paired together. All right, which one is this? The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent, vision serpent are the maybe? headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam. And the twins of sacrificial dance, Asian serp, chalk, shibsh, chalk, and the the date on this slab uses the Tzolkin, Tzolkin. or divine calendar made up of twenty weeks each with a named day, and strange supernatural creatures, sometimes called monsters, played an important role in Maya mythology. These oh, monsters the were often associated yeah. with the, the earth, phallic one. caves, or mountains. The bicephalic monster, bicephalic. sometimes called the celestial or cosmic monster, may have represented the sunrise or a long journey. <laughs> Bicephalic. The Maya kings were often in a protracted There's so state many of entries. war with local Cahals. How many are there? He oh, that's the last one. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local Cahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the right as a captured lord kneels at his feet. The Kahal holds a broken umbrella, a gesture typical of a supplicating captive. Okay, so there's 15 entries. The notebook that we saw earlier had the letters, has the letters on the, the layout of the place. So now we just gotta match those. So let's go back to the main hall first. Although this is a very interesting place. To... Let's look around. 1403. Ooh. Okay. Couple of boxes. Covered bowl, jade, limestone. So that's the contents of the boxes, maybe? What's this? Recycling? Deliveries. Another box. Johnny stuff. Sonny stuff. Hey. Okay. Good. Anything else here? Not that I can see. Okay, so let's go back. And go by the letters. So let's go to A first. A is in the corner here. So this is A, so that's the radio. Um, ham radio 5, I'll put A before it. Okay, and then across here is F. Now this must be, must be the, the geographic reach, right? So that was six. Um, then across we have L here. 
bowl. Ceramic is four, could be L. Um, let's see, then we have second row. We have E at the very end. Jade Relief, Lord Pakal. That might be the first one we heard. That's E might be one. But this is also about Pakal. Oh, Pakal's mother, actually. So M is Zach Cook. <laughs> Cook. Okay. Then across we have I. Rain, moon, and sun gods. Okay, there is a section on gods, so that might fit. Next row. Next row we have G at the very end. That's the modification stuff. Body shaping. So nine is G, and then this one? Ball game. That was 10. N. Nice. Then across we have D at the very end. The numbers. Counting. Okay. And then to the side. Scribes. That was 8. P. This is going well. <laughs> Okay, that was these. Now we have to go outside. God damn it. Okay. So the first one, we skip. So skip that one, we go to this one. This one is O. What is this? Three captives to the throne. I only have three entries left. And there's five outside here. Let's uh, look at the other one first. This is one. This is the phallic thing. Yeah. So that's C. It's 14. And then this one we ignore. We have to go across. How do I do that? Oh, nice. I just did it. So not this one, but the next one. This one. Capture of the Kahal. Oh, Kahal was one. 15. H. Okay, and then the next one. Should be right here. Vision quest. Vision serpent. Yeah, I have that one. 12k. Okay, so that leaves two. One is not this one, the next one. This one. Uh Tolkien. J. That means the one that we didn't know is the bloodletting. You guys are right. That's O. That's all of it. Okay, now we can go back and put them in the right order. So loud in there. Okay. Oh. Alright, how do I how do I back up? I have to do each, oh my god, each panel. Okay, A is ham. Five. Archaeologists work in some of them. D is seven. The Maya use different Counting. methods to rep- B is eight. Scribes. Maya scribes. C is 14. Strange supernatural the creatures phallic. sometimes called E1. 
I am Lord Pakal. I am Lord Pakal. F6 is correct. Although the geographic range of Maya City. Second row. G. Nine. In addition to adorning themselves Body with shaping. jewelry and H. Fifteen. Call. The Maya kings. Three. Gods. The Maya were. Thirteen. There, that looks like it's in order. Oh, yes. Fun. Okay. I feel like I would have liked working in a museum. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is our to-do list. This one we did. Nice. Oh no, this one we did. I'd better check to see if I'm done with that. Reorder. Oh no, that's not. That's the puzzle. But we do have the puzzle piece. We also have two pieces of base that we might be able to fix. There. Now I can start putting this together. Okay, can we turn this? Oh my god. I doubt they would let an intern like Nancy do this though. But who am I to say how they do their things? That's done. Nice. Auto glued and everything. Hey, the dude's gone. Do you think he went home for the day? Scratch that off the list. Okay. So, bring addenda to monolith loan agreement to Alejandro del Rio at the Mexican consulate for signature. How how do I go about that? Bring addenda. What's what does addenda mean? Maybe back at the hotel. Maybe. Uh, Bubble wrap has to wait until tomorrow. The puzzle, we don't have the numbering scheme yet. And we don't have a computer for the floppy disk either. Yeah, there's nothing at his desk I can snoop at, unfortunately. Okay. Addendum is extra info, like or like a contract. Hmm. I see. Okay, let's go back to the main hall. Oh. Can I go behind the... oh? What's that? B. <laughs> B. <laughs> the Mayan Glyph Road. B. Okay. Oh, this is a key card. We needed one for the game. Can I get the one of these? Is missing. Do you want a headphone instead of headphones? None of them are clickable. This one is. Okay. Cool. God, we're getting shit done. I'm becoming like a veteran Nancy player here. Uh, can we see something here? Contributors. Oh, are they fans? Topeka Commission for the Arts. That's the organization Prudence Rutherford works for. Yeah, it has to be ND Fan One Two Three. <laughs> Someday I'll get my name in there. Bubba, <laughs> fat sis. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, oh, that's where we came from. I guess she's not there anymore. Mm, we could do the quiz. If it's too late, we pass out, right? Oh, it is 11. Maybe we should just go. Check out the hotel. Bunk, bunk. Here we go. Hmm. 
No, this is my hotel room. Oh, maybe I can read the floppy here. I need a disc. Yeah, I have one. I need a disc. Oh, that's a disc reader. <laughs> Whoa, password for the floppy. Hmm. Dad's friend, Franklin Rose, asked me to volunteer as an assistant curator at the Beach Hill Museum. The museum is preparing an exhibit on the ancient civilization, goes a monolith. This is the opening text, isn't it? Oh, wait. Is this a to-do list? Oh, yeah. Met my boss, who showed me the museum's prized possession. Logograph number exhibits are missing, it's missing pieces. Quiz answers. That's all for tomorrow. Don't forget to put my card in to get credit for my work. Temple matchup puzzle should have answers in the exhibit hall or garden. Oh, why is everyone's phone prefix this 555? Strange. <laughs> Met the museum's epigrapher. Henrik, right. Need to bring papers about the monolith to the Mexican consulate. That's it. That's our, our to do thing. Found Sonny's diskette. Information on the diskette may help with tasks. Hmm. See if Franklin knows prudence. Password protected. Look around his desk for clues. Okay. Be sure to check in with Bess and George. <laughs> Cute. Okay. Anything I else? Need a disc. We can call. Bess. Yeah, she might be sleeping. It's midnight. Yeah. Let's go to bed and try tomorrow. Um, anything else in my room I need to look at? My suitcases? I can't look at my suitcases! That's a first. Lock the door. You never know who's gonna come and try and kill you. You have many enemies, Nancy Drew. Let's set an alarm for 7 a.m. That sounds good, right? <laughs> it's such a horrible sound. Bess is ghosting us. Yeah, <laughs> she is. Beach. Beach Hill. Okay. So. Next day. Come in. Come in. How do I. Oh, there. How are the tasks coming along? Um. I can't seem to find the addenda to the monolith loan agreement that I'm supposed to bring to Alejandro Del Rio. Check with Henrik on that. Okay. Can you explain how you want me to reorder that Maya numbering exhibit? Check with Henrik on that. Okay. When did Henrik come on board? I got an email from him one day saying he heard the news about Beach Hill getting the monolith. He said he'd drop everything to come here and translate those glyphs. He was even willing to take a pay cut. What could I say except giddy up? You're hired. Mmm, suspicious. I've got work to do. Bye. Bye. That's just talking to her, right? Yeah. Okay, we we need to talk to Henrik on that. There he I is. I see you succeeded in reconstructing that Maya pot. Do you know what the glyph on it means? No, I was hoping you could Don't tell play me. Don't play ball in the house. Glyphs are some of the rarest and most difficult to translate. Even most of my colleagues wouldn't have a clue about this one. Ah, but I'm a rare breed myself, Nancy. And this is one of my areas of expertise. You got, you my, got my undivided, undivided attention. attention. The glyph on that pot signifies the great ancient Maya city of Copan in Honduras. There happens to be a very important dig going on there right now. Hmm. Do you know any of the archaeologists there? I have a few connections. Yes, I'm keeping up with the action by ham radio. 
Hmm. I can't seem to find the addenda to the monolith loan agreement that I'm supposed to bring to Alejandro Del Rio. Sunny June bobbed around this place like an untethered balloon. <laughs> Who knows where he left those documents? You'll just have to hunt them down. And FYI, Senor Del Rio has been extremely touchy about this monolith loan, so try not to keep him waiting. Did you know the deputy curator who is here before me? Hurricane Sunny? I'm afraid I did. If he wasn't losing paperwork or setting off the fire alarm, he was cornering our visitors with his theory that the Maya were abducted by aliens. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid you'll be cleaning up his messes for a while. What is the Spectro X Archeo Analyzer for? It's used for identifying chemical compounds that are found on artifacts, oh. traces of ink, blood, charcoal, and other substances. The beauty of the machine is that it can collect these traces without damaging the artifact in any way. Hmm. But it cost us a fortune, so don't fiddle with it unless you get Joanna's permission. See you around, Henrik. Bye. Bye. I thought he could tell me something about the numbering scheme as well. Okay. That doesn't really help us. Maybe if we just put the plate in, we'll get a hint, maybe? Or then maybe she'll ask, you know? So, oh god, it was something. Fifteen, god. Yeah, there's no way we can know all of them. We need some kind of reference somewhere. We need to initiate another conversation with him to trigger new dialogue. I see. Well, we got that plate in, at least. What is this for? What's that do? Oh, I have to match them. Oh, that's the ones I've been writing down. Okay. B. This is road. Um. This is black. Um. This one we have to ink. Wait, that wasn't correct. Do I have to do it in a certain order, you think? Ink. Road. Black. What was this? Throne? Oh, maybe I made a mistake. So I only don't know 19 and north. Wrong guess. 19? North. So, ink. Road. B. Black. And throne. So, what does that do? Got my card back. Okay. Palenque. Uh, cook. Zach Cook. Sulkian. Supreme God. I'm gonna guess Sun first. No. Oh, I can just try again, right. Okay, it's none of those. Supreme God. It must be in the backyard. One of those slabs will tell us. Oops. Mm, the Rain God. That's another one at least we can try. But it doesn't say Supreme. Eat Samna? Where have we seen that? Those birds, yeah. And then you come back here and it's like, oh, silence. Mm, no. 
Oh yeah, it's Sanna. There you go. So I T Z A M N A. Okay, it's Sanna. Found it. I do have to restart it though. Good thing I'm writing all of it down. <laughs> Otherwise it would be impossible. The name of the a modern Mayan language. Ooh. Modern Maya. Modern Maya. One of these has to be one of those. Quiche! Oh god, that one's hard to write. Let's hope it's quiche. I love how I'm supposed to deliver a contract and I'm just like, puzzles! Gotta do the museum quiz! <laughs> quiche. Okay, what's the next? Oh! Successfully completed the temple level 1 quiz. You have already solved the other activities. You may now use your temple keycard to descend to the next level. So we need one more thing. Quiz matchup bull. Hmm. One more puzzle somewhere. Can we go in here? <laughs> is that the next level we can go to? Is it maybe this? <laughs> Try your hand at this ancient Maya war game. Object, The object is to capture all of your opponent's warriors by bumping all of his or pieces by landing on a square occupied by them. Each player has two turns, you must roll the corn dice on your first turn, but you can pass on your second turn. If a warrior runs off the playing field, he will return to the opposite direction. Okay. You'll play orange on the left side. Hey. Haven't we played this? In a different game? The Jane game, yeah! The werewolf game, we played this. I forgot how it works though. Hey. Hey. Oh god. So, okay. So hey. that's two, oh, I see. Three, oh god. Hey. Two. Hey. Three. So now I roll. Oh, I passed him. You have to try and land on each other, right? How do I put a new one out? There he comes. If I roll five, if I roll three now. Fuck. He reset as well. Hey. Hey. Isn't it based on luck then though? Hey. Oh god. Reset. This is the triangle thing. Oh. Hey. I've no idea how to utilize that though. I'm dead. <laughs> One against three. I can do it. Yes. <laughs> Come to me, little bitch. Fuck. I'm so close. Oh, two. 
Oh, it's three. <sighs> the suspense. <laughs> How do you win this? Oh, damn it. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Okay, come right in front of me. Okay, now I can get you. Yes! Okay, we're tied now. Hit pass for the computer? I don't think I can. I can do it for myself, but... Oh, I can. So I can manipulate the game. I didn't realize I could do that. Finally did it! Okay, now what? Wait, I have nothing on me. <laughs> oh, I did it. It did count. Okay, thank god. Wait, so now we can check our progress, right? Or can we try the door, you think? Sneaky, sneaky, in the temple. Oh god, more games. Oh god, more games. Hi. Okay, let's see it. What's this one? You've reached level two. Remember to use your temple key card. Okay. The name of one of Shield Jaguar's wives. I need a second. I need the back of my paper. Um, okay. I'll just write down shield wife. Okay, and what else do we have? What's this one? Maze game offline. Enter in the system login and then password. Huh. Okay, we'll remember that. Oh, that reminds me of El Dorado again. <laughs> okay, what's this? Shoot! Okay. Uh, is this the strength? Do that. Oh, hi. Yes. Hey. Now I have to do it from further away. Okay. Too high. <laughs> this is fun. Oh no, he goes back to the beginning. What did I do? Four? Okay, four high. Then we'll do mid four. It's too strong still. Three mid, maybe? Three mid. Four mid? Maybe try too low. Although I don't that doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Okay, how about four low? Go low. <gasps> Should I try like five mid? Yes. So what's this going to be? Low six. Yeah, let's try. We haven't used low yet. Fuck yeah! Good one. Six low. I don't know why I'm even writing it down, but... Give me my card, bitch. Thank you. 
Okay. Anything else here? Ooh. What's this? Yum. Yum, similar rules. Oh god. That goes really fast. Uh huh. Jawbone. Skeletal figure with rotting flesh. Eyeballs. Marked by the Simi death sign. Oh. That's a death sign? Lady Rainbow. Well, that was confusing. We have the middle one. Ball game. Maze. In a quiz. Hmm. Okay. Maybe we should find that contract <laughs> that we're supposed to deliver instead of doing puzzles. Unless we get it by doing puzzles. Who knows? Okay, the question was the shield's wife. So, Pakal's wife? We've seen something about him marrying someone, right? God, where was it though? Oh, my lord. Shield Jaguar's wife. Lady Xok. The challenge is going through this garden without zooming in on things. Okay, let's see if we can talk to this dude again. Howdy. Nope. See you around, Henrik. Howdy. Fine. Why does he give me Wesker vibes? Okay. The addendum is obviously not here. How's our to-do list doing? Addenda, I mean. Oh yeah, the bubble wrap. I almost forgot. Five 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 nine nine six three. That should do it, right? Silvio's curatorial bonanza. I'd like to place an order, please. Have you ordered from us before? Yes, I think so. We have an account number. Okay, good. That saves me a lot of paperwork. What's the account number? That saves me a lot of paperwork. B H one one nine K. B H one one. B H one one nine K. Beach Hill. Are you serious? That's right. I'm the new deputy curator, Nancy Drew. Well, whoop de do. It's Nancy Drew. <laughs> But Silvio's curatorial bonanza no longer does business with Beach Hill. Oh I've shit! Sent all six of the outstanding invoices to a collection agency, and you jokers won't get another packing peanut out of Silvio Jr. ever. Do not call here again. Well then, that sucks. Is there an alternative? Maybe our friend has something to say about it. Howdy. I'm supposed to order more packing supplies, but the company says they won't do business with us anymore. Does Beach Hill have bills it can't pay? Uh, no comment. Uh. But Henrik, uh. how am I supposed to get this order taken care of? I hereby absolve you of that task. <gasps> if Joanna wants things shipped, she can stuff them into garbage bags for all I care. <gasps> Henry. See you around, Henrik. That will be fine. My God. Let's see what Joanna has to say about this. Let's go see her. Joanna. <laughs> Henrik said, "This is this." Come in. the tasks coming along i've got work to do apparently we have nothing to say about that so never mind i guess we can put it take it off of our task list yep now we just need to know about the numbers and then to find the addenda check the couch is it, hi is it just hiding around somewhere well, I have no reason to check it out yet, so I doubt there's anything here. 
Um, let's go back to the quiz, I guess. The other one. There's another one. I only see the one couch. Or is this a different one? Oh! When did that get there? Oh, Adenda! Oh my god. <laughs> so we found it. Yep. Sure got it. So do we take it somewhere? Yes. Nice, thank you. Thanks for helping with that. Let's see. And then we just have the number puzzle. Buenos dias. Stipers legal provenance, it's your duty. Oh. A work of art may travel great distances and change hands many times during the course of its lifetime. Typically, legal transfer of ownership happens either as a sale, an inheritance, or a gift. Provenance documents are an important means of establishing an artwork's authenticity, as well as confirming the legality of its ownership. They show the ge geographic, personal, and commercial route of the work of art. That is, they identify the date of each exchange, the names of the people involved, the circumstances of the transfer, and the location where the transaction was taken place. Ideally, an unbroken chain of ownership can be traced all the way from the artist workshop to the present day. Frequently, though, some documents are missing. The art dealer or museum creator, cur curator has no way of knowing, knowing how the artwork has been exchanged during these gaps in the record. When this is the case, the legality of present day ownership becomes suspect. When researching an artwork's provenance, the following documents may provide clues. Okay. Makes sense. Mm. Can I look around? Maybe from here? There. How may I help you? Hi! Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. <laughs> that was the same hi. <laughs> I'm transforming so, into Nancy you're Drew. Joanna Riggs' newest pirate in training. How does it feel to join the ranks with the modern day conquistadors? I beg your pardon, but how does a deputy curator become a pirate in your book? You had better brush up on your history, young lady. When the Spanish explorers invaded Mexico, they became known as the conquistadors or conquerors. They robbed the indigenous peoples of their wealth, not just their gold, but their artwork, their sacred objects. Anything they did not steal, they burned to the ground. Hmm. Alejandro, I understand that many crimes were committed in the name of exploration, but that was hundreds of years ago. What does this have to do with Beach Hill? There is more. In the 19th century, archaeologists discovered the ruins of ancient civilizations predating even the Aztecs. Many of the dig sites were robbed, and the stolen artifacts were sold off to art museums and collectors around the world. Today, finally, it is illegal among most civilized nations to remove an artifact from its native country. But sadly, there are thousands of precious antiquities with highly questionable provenance floating around the Western world. That's true. But Joanna only wants to display this artwork, to celebrate it, so the public will be able to enjoy it and learn about your people's great talents and achievements. If the American public wants to see our art, they should come to Mexico. Honestly, I agree. <laughs> the amount of artwork that is stolen, like historic artworks that is in museums nowadays, that is actually stolen, technically. What do you mean by questionable provenance? An artifact's provenance is the story of its origin and ownership. For example, <sighs> how it made its way from a temple at Chichen Itza to a museum in Washington, D.C. If the artifact's provenance reveals that it has been stolen, then that artifact must be returned to the country of its origin. So the problem has been remedied, hasn't it? No, not at all. Provenance documents are often tampered with or forged to cover up the theft. Because <sighs> so of this, sniffly. thefts continue and a great deal of art is moved on the black market, even today. Unethical art dealers and greedy museum curators do nothing to stop this. 
Are you suggesting Beach Hill is involved in these kinds of misdealings? If Joanna Riggs or that overstuffed pillowhead Sinclair <laughs> had any decency, they would take measures to see that all Maya artifacts were returned to Mexico at once where they belong. Hmm. Well, I think I'll have to chew on some of these issues for a while, Alejandro. In the meantime, I do need you to sign off on these changes to the loan agreement for the monolith. Do you mind? I am still not happy that such a rare find will have its debut exhibition on American soil. But in my country, too, there are people for whom money talks. Mm. I will take those documents now. Okay. I guess I should give him the contract. Thank you. I have some business with Joanna at the museum later, so I will return the contract to her then, after I have looked it over. Okay. Are you sure? I don't mind waiting. You may consider your mission accomplished. Well, uh, okay then. Goodbye. Please ignore the fact that it's shaped into a paper airplane. So, back to the museum. We have the quiz we can do. And maybe now we can get the info on the numericals. Maybe? Let's check with the dude again. We can change our checklist at least. Those familiar door sounds. This one. Just the numbers left now. Howdy. See you around, Henrik. We do. Howdy. Where the fuck are we gonna find the info on it? Oh yeah, we haven't called Sheila. It's four. Could do that. You can only call her from the hotel. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, numbers. There must be some way we can find out the numbers, right? It's in the floppy disk. Oh, so we need to get the dude's password for the floppy. How do we find that? Do you think it's in his notebook? Do you think the password is like Coco Kringle or something? Lavash. <laughs> no Coco Kringle for you, buddy. <laughs> Justadventure.com. We can look there as well. Wait, can I click this? Oh, that's just information. Use the phone in Nancy's hotel room to call your friends on suggestions. What did you? Okay. Let's go back there. Try putting anything in the password. Do you think maybe we get a hint? It's like my favorite chocolate bar. <laughs> hint. Yeah, it is the cow. I feel like some... Wait, but how do you spell it? Kringle? Or just Coco? No. It's two words? Oh, I would have never guessed. JR is hounding me to get this done. Can't keep all of them straight. Headphones will help me figure out what is playing in the display. Oh! I just did it without the headphones. Dots, bars, and gods. Yes. Sarah looks like a turtle shell, but no turtle. Okay, one dot is one, two dots is two, a bar is five. That's what it was. I remember from Parasite Eve. Picture this, each dot is an individual finger. Okay, bars usually vertical, dots left of the bars. If it doesn't look exactly like a dot or a bar, it doesn't count. Squigglies, ovals, incomplete dots, crooked bars, chocolate bars. <laughs> the Maya often put decorative marks next to their numbers, so just ignore anything that's not a bar and or dot. Some gods also represent numbers. 
One has fish lips. Two has a big hat with five fingers. Oh my God, just, just take a picture of this. This is way too hard. Okay, we got all the info. Stuff to forget. Can't figure out the answer to the level two quiz question about the matchmaker and Henrik isn't speaking to me right now. So either I'm blind as a bat and can't find the exhibit that has the answer, or we just never put it in. Joanna has no help on this, so I'll just have to wait for a horde of visitors getting very frustrated with this question once we open the museum. I'll let Henrik deal with it. Came up with a great question for level three, but Henrik hates it. Once I get some time, I'll make an exhibit for this. Just don't know where I can get my hands on one. I wonder if Joanna will spring a trip for me to go down to Guatemala. Damn. Oh, system login, Shun. System password, space baby. <laughs> that was a lot of info. That was awesome. Uh, should we still call? Although I do think we can do the puzzle now, so. Let's go back and do the puzzle. I'm excited to do the puzzle. Here we are. So, we have the, all these faces. One kind of looks like a doctor. Um, oh, three looks like a doctor. So this is the doctor. Do we have a three somewhere? There. Wait, is it just two and one? Oh, it's just, oh, it's just ordered. <laughs> um... So this is 12, then. Oh, that's actually 12. And this is 7. 5, 10, 15, 17. Where's 17? There. 12, this is then 7. This should be 10. This is 11. This should be 5. Oh, that is 5. Wait. Oh yeah, because 0 is here. 10, 14. Then this should be 4. Sixteen. One. Maybe this is then zero, if that doesn't mean anything. 17, 18, and 19 all look like the original number with the removable, removable jaw of Lahun. Oh, these have like a little jaw. Uh, okay, so how about two? Ka has a big hat with five fingers and a semi-oval in it. A big hat with five fingers. This one? Nine. A beard or acne? <laughs> I guess that- oh, this is a beard, I guess. Um, 10, 11, 12, 13. Has a T on the cheek. That looks right. Yes. So should we just leave it like that? Oh, we did it. That was a hard one. That took me a little bit. Checklist, baby. Boom. We did everything. Awesome. Our checklist is done. Maybe we should go to Joanna and say that our work is done. I wonder what the mystery is, actually. There's nothing that's gone wrong or anything. It's locked. Like, you know how- It's locked. Oh, she's not here anymore? Ah, oh, it's 7pm. She went home. Well, I guess we should go home for the day then as well, huh? We could do the quiz a little bit more if you, go if you guys want. Oh, we also have the password for this one. I don't know if I have to put this in, but... Uh, 
login. Shoon. Password space baby. Oh god. Holy shit. Wait, what am I? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, you can also point. That's much harder though. This is the maze. Oh, right. I'm just gonna walk through it for now. We've played something similar to this. In another Nancy Drew game. This really gives me Tomb Raider vibes. Well, we're making progress. <laughs> oh, the floor is scary. It's a death mask. Is it actually this? Oh no, I made it. It was green. Wait, let's check our progress. Yeah, the maze is done. Cool. Okay, now just the quiz. Yes. Which Maya monster represents the continuous cycle of life and death? Oh, okay. We've seen that. In the garden? The phallic one? <laughs> Is, is that the one? <laughs> Let's go! Uh, I gotta turn around. <laughs> and then go this way. Phallic! Here you are. Uh, Two-headed crocodile. Yeah. Wait, do we need the name of it? Is that, do you think bicephalic is the answer? Which my... Okay. Bicephalic. Yes. What did the Maya call a decorative woven blouse? Oh, the huipil, yeah. You are right. Yes, oh my god. What is a kahal? Uh, I don't know. Do you guys remember? Nobleman? Noble? Yes! Oh my god, you guys are the best! What is the name of a Maya matchmaker? Can't find the answer to this one in the museum, SJ. So we have to get this info somewhere else. A Maya matchmaker. Now that we've gotten to the question, maybe we can ask people about it. We're almost there, but everyone's gone home for the day, so maybe we should do the same. Or maybe our friends know. Maybe we should go back to the hotel and call them. You need to inspect the monolith. It's vital to progressing further. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Where is it? The middle of the garden. Oh, the one we danced around? Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. May I speak to Franklin Rose, please? Who may I say is calling? This is Nancy Drew. Just a minute, please. Nancy, to what do I owe the pleasure of this call? Oops, false alarm. <laughs> I'll call you later. <laughs> Not a problem, dear. Okay. Well, if you want, we can go back. Monolith. Here. This side looks damaged. Oh. Footsteps? Nancy Ooh. Drew, or should I say, Detective Drew, I'm Sinclair. Hi. Hi there. I guess you've done your homework. Who are you? I was at a meeting with the BOD recently, and I caught wind of your appointment and your credentials. 
Very impressive, if I do say so myself. The BOD? The BOD? That would be the board of directors, those cranky old cats. They do keep the ducks squared away around here. I'll give them that. So, how's this for a specimen? Ever seen a million dollars worth of rock before? <laughs> Do diamonds count? Do diamonds count? <laughs> Ouch. Well, they did say you were sharp. Seriously, though. Thank goodness you're here. I'm afraid the museum may be in terrible jeopardy. Oh? What kind of jeopardy? Joanna told me to butt out, but I'm so fond of Beach Hill, I just hate to see it fall prey to scoundrels. Hmm? What scoundrels? It's a sensitive subject. Meet me in my office later, and I'll explain everything then. Huh? Where's your office? 707 Bing Cherry Boulevard. I've got to go. Enjoy your first day at Beach Hill. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Why is this the same site? How do I... Oh. Do you see anything? I don't see anything. Oh, this one's different. Looks like this side is missing a part. Hmm. It looks like the disc that's in the exhibition hall. It's locked. Oh. Oh. It needs a car. Someday I'll get there. Looks like this goes in there. Calendar stones. It's locked. It's locked. Mm. We don't have the key for that. Okay. So everyone's gone home. I guess we should go home for the day. Unless we have a new location now. We do. But it's 9 p.m. We should probably save it for tomorrow. Oh, PM. Oops. My bad. Sorry. Ugh. Okay. Let's go to the office. Let's see what's going on over there. Oh. Taylor Sinclair. Hi. It's about time. Oh, my fears are like maggots infesting my poor old carcass. Want a cookie? They're from Oaxaca. <laughs> oh, my fears are like maggots infesting my carcass. Want a cookie? <laughs> You're trying to cut back, Nancy. Why? No, thank you. You said Beach Hill is in jeopardy. I need to know why. The art world is being ransacked, Nancy. Prudence Rutherford, a major patron of the arts, had her fire ruby necklace stolen from oh, her shit. villa in Topeka. Two weeks later, a whole display case full of rare Maya artifacts was heisted from a museum in New Mexico. Oh, shit. Do you think there's a connection between the two thefts? Who knows? I'm just telling you, this community, our friends and colleagues, my people are being systematically trounced by thugs! Who's to say Beach Hill won't be next? You've got to do something! Hmm. Does Joanna share your concerns? I've urged Joanna to approach the board about making some security upgrades, but she just keeps saying that the timing isn't right to ask for money. I understand your concern, but what can I do to help? We need your eagle eyes. We need your bat ears. <laughs> we need you to sniff out the stink of trouble. <laughs> uh, hmm. I'll do my best, but it sounds like what you really need is a new breed of police dog. Don't play modest mouse with me. Most people call me Nosy Parker. Modest mouse. <laughs> Most people oh. call me Nosy Parker. But anyway, tell me something about the art business. 
Is that a contemporary painting? You bet your socks it is. Would you believe I dug it up in my backyard? Good thing you're not trying to make a living as a <laughs> comedian. <sighs> so, what about the painting? What a mean How thing to say. How about that rubber shark? The artist's name is Poppy Dada. She's a teenager in South Dakota. The art world is going bananas over her stuff. I'll unload that one for some serious De Niro. Hmm. Joanna says you performed an act of wizardry in helping Beach Hill acquire the Pakal carving. Getting those provenance docks together was a pig and a half. Oh, they're on the up and up, I assure you. But ah, uh, to have been at the height of my career back before the crackdown, those were the days. What crackdown? crackdown? Maybe sometime I'll tell you a sad story I call How Mexico Lost Its Sense of Humor. Not today though, Nancy. Damn, dude's just in it for the money, isn't he? An unethical modern-day conquistador. Robbing Mexico of its cultural history. Exactly. That's what I want to say, but... The when money. When you sell a piece of art, what kind of commission do you get? Standard. 10%. It's no king's ransom. Unless, of course, you sell something for a million bucks. Too bad I'm not allowed to put that monolith on the market, huh? Hmm... Alejandro says you're unethical, a modern-day conquistador, that you're robbing Mexico of its cultural history. <laughs> and I say Alejandro <laughs> is the real bully of the playground, a lunch money extortionist who loves nothing more than to see the other boys and girls go hungry. I'd better okay. get going. Bye now. Whatever, bro. God, what a weird piece of art. Um, anything else here? It doesn't look like it. No. Well, that was weird. Let's see. How are the tasks coming along? Why did you become a museum curator? I became a curator because I want to help make artifacts available to as many people as possible. That's all that matters, isn't it? Unless you're Alejandro Del Rio. Hmm. Do you think Alejandro would go to extreme measures like stealing to reclaim Mexico's artifacts? Who knows? I've got work to do. Bye. She asked me how the tasks were coming along and then I answered her question with another question and then we didn't get anywhere. <laughs> Great. Oh, I forgot we can speed up the turning around. I always forget. Um, let's talk to the other dude. Who is not here? 8 a.m.? Where is he? Hmm. Also, maybe if the. Jesus. What is it? Oh my god, where is the sound coming from? Joanna, what's going on? Beach Hill's been hit. Sit tight, Nancy. The police are on their way. Okay. What's going on? <laughs> Exhibit alarm. Oh. I should talk to Joanna before I touch anything. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Where is she? Is she back in her office? Come in. Someone has cooked up my worst nightmare and served it to me on a plate. Hmm. I'm sorry about the theft, Joanna. It must be a terrible loss for the museum. That's the understatement. That was loud, yeah. <laughs> that was fucking loud. <laughs> Did the police find any clues around the display case? There's the mystery, the yeah. took some samples for the crime lab, but they couldn't promise any overnight results. So if you want to put your little magnifying glass up to the scene, it's fine with me. Thanks. Great. I'll let you know if I find anything. Go to it. Nice. She trusts me. Wow. Yeah, it's weird that we've been playing for two and a half hours and this is the point where like the drama happens. Like now we have our mystery. It took really long. The Scarlet Hand. Unusual J relief. Oh yeah, we've read this. 
So that's missing. Is there anything else? Nothing that we can actually look at. Hmm. Can we examine this this letter somewhere? There is the this thing. Oh, this is missing too. I was, I was thinking it looked different. Oh no, it's here. <laughs> Can we use this thing? I shouldn't be messing around with this without permission. Fuck. He's gone. That is oddly suspicious, don't you think? Where would he go? Save the game. Oh my god, I haven't saved a single time yet. <laughs> Something saved here. <laughs> okay, good. I could maybe ask some people about it. Come in. Need something? Have you seen Henrik? Ah, there I found we go. A piece of paper inside the Pakal display case. It had some glyphs on it and a print of a red hand. I'm hoping he can give me a translation. What am I? Fish food? Henrik's not the only one around here who can read a glyph, you know. Okay, great. Did you happen to see the thief's message? The police showed me the note. It said, The magician suffers yellow death. Whatever that means. Apparently, the thief just couldn't come up with the glyphs for the curator suffers flaming purple disgrace. <laughs> the magician suffers yellow death. Huh. I'm curious about the red handprint the thief left. Does it have any significance in Maya culture? Afraid I can't help you there. What I want to know is what the hand was printed with. It's obviously not finger paint. Why don't you do a little analysis on it in the lab? Okay. I haven't seen Henrik since the theft. Where do you think he could be? Who knows? He's so fishy. Should be hunting him down. He was in the museum when it happened. So now we can use this thing. Yes. Please insert sample and press start. <laughs> Spectro X. Okay, I've got a graph of the chemical used for the handprint. Now I've got to match it up with a known substance. Okay. There. That's it. That was easy. HGS. Turn it off. Uh, HGS. Is it on here? Um. Out there. According oh. to this chart, HG stands for mercury. Periodic table like this always makes me fucking nervous because this is like, I had like one class in high school, like one semester, and I failed it so badly that they were like, yeah, this is not for you. <laughs> Should I click on S as well? S stands for sulfur. Okay. So the handprint was made from mercury and sulfur. Okay. It's just instant PTSD from school. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll take that info back to Joanna. Come in. Need something? I did the chemical analysis you suggested. That red hand was printed with a compound containing mercury and sulfur. Does that mean anything to you? Sure, sure, cinnabar. Cinnabar. I would rub it into their most important carvings to add definition to the artist's lines. Cinnabar. Paper dolls too? Remember that stream? <laughs> Where would a person get a supply of cinnabar? We use cinnabar here at the museum the same way the Maya did, to keep things as authentic as possible. Henrik orders those kinds of supplies, but we've been out of stock for quite a while. The last I heard, there was some kind of holdup with the distributor. Hmm. I've got work to do. Semper ubi sabubi. The what now? What did she just say? <laughs> Booby? Booby. 
We know the material of the handprint, the components, but then we need to find Henrik because he he's the one who orders it normally. Maybe that means we can find something at his desk. No. There is that locked desk here though. Hmm. So we need a key for that. And there's the radio. You have voicemail. Press zero to retrieve messages. Nancy, hi. It's Franklin Rose. I'm calling because it's just... This theft is very bad news for the museum. You can't imagine the limb we went out on to acquire that Pakal carving. It's been one of the museum's main attractions. Um... I don't want to take you away from your internship, but if you can do a little investigating, well, I think I speak for the whole board when I say we'd be very grateful. Give me a call when you have a chance. And Nancy, thanks. To replay messages, press zero. Press nine for an outside line. <gasps> the voice. Think of Harley Quinn and then listen to this. You have no voicemail. Press nine for an outside line. <laughs> Press 9 for an outside line. Oh, what's this? Nancy, something's come up and I'll be gone for a bit. Your mission in the meantime, run through the temple activities to verify that all questions can be answered based on info available elsewhere in the museum. We don't want a little rascal rebellion on our hands when we when the exhi exhibit exhibit opens. No, do we? Be back ASAP, Henrik. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's the thing we got stuck on right now. We don't know the answer for the last question. The problem is we have a question that the museum doesn't have an answer to. So we can't find it here. Which makes me think that we need Joanna or Henrik or someone else to answer the question for us about the matchmakers. Call Bess. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Oh my god! Henrik, what are you doing? Henrik! Henrik! Someone push him off the sta down the stairs? Amnesia? Wow. <laughs> Henrik must have taken a real nosedive off that pyramid. Do you think he just fell, Nancy? Or was he pushed? Sounds like you need to find out about hospital visiting hours. Yeah, but... You'd better get the lowdown from Joanna first. George is right. She is your supervisor, after all. Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> Couldn't even get a word in. <laughs> Good morning! First the Pakal carving is stolen, and now my star glyph man bumps his head and forgets his own name. What's next, Nancy? Del Rio pulls the plug on the monolith. The board clams up on my funding. My mother posts my old prom pictures on the internet. <laughs> Take it easy, Joanna. I'm sure everything is going to be okay. What I need from you right now is action, not commentary, Nancy. Will you follow up with the hospital and see if there's anything we can do to get Henrik's marbles back? Okay. How can I help around here? You can also pick up Henrik's mail if he gets any. Keep the lab in order and... Just try to help me keep the entire museum from going up in smoke. I've got work to do. Bye. Okay, so we have to call the hospital and check for mail. I don't know. I don't think there's any mail, is there? Oh, bubble wrap. Hmm. I found the culprit, guys. Let's see if there's a number here. Archiver, preservations, microscope doctor. You have voicemail. Press zero. This message is for Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. Oh, there we go. This is Nurse Bluefoot calling from Eleanor Roosevelt Memorial Hospital in regards to Henrik van der Heun. I believe you're a colleague of his. Since Mr. Vanderhune was admitted, 
He has repeated your name several times in states of semi-consciousness. What? As we've been unable to contact any of his family members, we're hoping you might be willing to act oh. as Henrik's support person as he begins the difficult process of restoring his memory. Please call me as soon as possible to discuss this. My direct line is 202-555-4000. Okay. Thank you. To replay messages, press zero. Press nine for an outside line. Okay, Harley. <laughs> five, 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 four thousand. This is Nurse Bluefoot. Nurse Bluefoot? Here this go. is Nancy Drew. You left me a message regarding Henrik Vanderhuhn. Vanderhuhn. Nancy Drew. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I'm so relieved. <laughs> We've been unable to locate any family members, and we do like amnesia patients to have at least one personal support person when they begin reality orientation. What's reality orientation? Oh, well, reality orientation is a kind of treatment that helps a patient get reacquainted with the facts and circumstances of his or her life. Henrik has not actually lost his memory. It's just that his brain is injured in such a way that he can't access the place mm. where the memories are stored. I see. So we need to help him find the trail of crumbs. Is that it? Exactly. Well, first, we do repetitive memory exercises to help Henrik relearn the basic facts, like his name and address, the name of his parakeet, if he has one, the <laughs> date, and so on. Second, we try to stimulate Henrik's sensory memories in order to help trigger or find the way back to his cognitive memories. What are sensory memories? A sensory memory no medical is sense like in this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did you say so? That you recognize by sight or touch, smell or sound or oh, what is that last one? Oh yes, taste. A cognitive memory is something that you know or remember intellectually. Wait a minute. For example, how do you know the name of this planet? Somewhere along the way, you learn that it's This doesn't sound like a nurse. And you just remember. But say you bump your head and forget the name of this planet. You don't know where Maybe in it's... the solar system you're floating. Maybe someone posing as a nurse. That would be most unfortunate. Trying to get information exactly. out of Henrik. But then I show you a picture of our marvelous blue and green globe. Suddenly you remember that glorious sight is earth mm, this is a weird dude earth. this is how a sensory memory can trigger a cognitive or intellectual one what if the patient doesn't remember right away you can't help henrik remember his childhood but you can probably help him remember his work and who knows where that will take him all roads lead to Rome, as they mm. say. One great tool is the Reality Orientation Board. This is a place to post information and pictures for the patient to look at over a period of time. You may want to bring in images or photos to place on mm. the board. He's Think sus. The museum, perhaps. Very sus. I see. Well, I'll be happy to help in Visiting any way hours. I can. When are visiting hours? Visiting hours are 10 to 4 every day. If the okay. patient is not engaged in treatment and if he seems stable. Okay. Great. Uh, is there anything else? Just remember, Henrik's brain has been knocked around like a peanut in its shell. That's what a concussion is, isn't it? Attention that your brain like hits the headaches, edge of your skull? Anxiety. Because your Sometimes brain's like floating and then too. if you hit your head we to heart to like the your brain kind of like check. bumps into the Don't bone. Don't push him too hard or he may have some kind of meltdown. Thanks for the warning, Nurse Bluefoot. Be well. He is so fishy. Also, I just realized it's already 6 p.m. and we've been streaming three and a half hours. I feel like this would be the perfect spot end of first stream because this is a bit of a longer game right i feel like it's best to try and split this one over two streams just so we can take our time you know 
and not like lose energy and try and like rush puzzles and stuff. Think you're 40% down done? Yeah, I would say like halfway.